So last week we had talked about uh, type 1 diabetes and previously in our video as well we had talked about type 2 diabetes and pre-diabetes. So today I believe it will be a good time to talk about hypoglycemia. Right, Dr. Ho? Yes. Right, so let's today do it. We'll be Yep. So we'll be talking about hypoglycemia. Uh, I, we just want to start off with letting you know what is hypoglycemia, right? Yes. Hypoglycemia means low blood sugar. And how low is low is the first question. So clinically, I guess when you're checking your blood sugars by finger sticks, um, even in a blood uh, serum blood level, a uh, low sugar clinically is less than 70. A severely low blood sugar is 54 or less. So those two numbers, less than 70 or 54 or less, are considered hypoglycemia. So there are specific group of people who have this low blood sugar, and it's important to let people be aware of who are, who are those that are prone to low blood sugar and what to do. All right. So those that are prone to low blood sugars are patients with type 1 diabetes who are dependent on insulin uh, entirely, and then patients with type 2 diabetes, mm -hmm. the ones specifically that are insulin dependent. And there are certain medications also, oral medications, that are associated with hypoglycemia for type 2 diabetics. Yeah. And elderly people, in addition as well, if they are diabetic, they are prone to low blood sugar as you age. Mm -hmm. And if you have uh, chronic kidney conditions like uh, mm -hmm. CKD, they are also prone to uh, low That's blood good. sugar. Yeah. And uh, people who have uh, who are diabetic and who are fasting because there are specific period of time in the season, the year that some people go on fasting, and if they are fasting the other period, they are very prone to low blood sugar. There are changes that definitely need to be made when you're fasting, so that's something that we can talk about more specifically. But um, usually the medications need to be cut down. If you take uh, insulin with meals, obviously you would not take that while you're fasting. Um, they're short-acting insulin that's taken only with a meal, and yeah. that should not be taken during times of fasting. And not just fasting as well. If you are doing vigorous physical exercise, you need to also control or monitor your blood sugar because you're also prone to low blood sugar at that time. Yeah. Right. Okay, so um, let's talk about the symptoms of hypoglycemia because obviously there are signs and symptoms that people should look up to, to know. Right. So some of the symptoms of hypoglycemia are shakiness. So feeling shaky or trembling, um, lightheadedness. So like feeling like you're going to pass out, um, just feeling weak and tired are some additional symptoms of hypoglycemia, low sugar. However, when it's severe, even some patients can truly pass out from a low blood sugar. So um, they can become so uh, depleted of sugar to the brain that they actually pass out. So those are, that's a severe case of hypoglycemia. Um, but prior to that, there are warning signs, like we said, of just feeling tired, shaky, lightheaded, even foggy, like just feeling like, you know, you're not fully with it. Um, feeling like you're even losing consciousness or just um, severely tired or trembling. So those are definitely important signs that need to be uh, paid attention to um, when you are at risk of hypoglycemia. Yeah, you absolutely nailed it. And some can even develop seizures, you know, if they are very, very severe. So um, if you have low blood sugar, your sugar is low, uh, there are things you can do. We call it the 1515 rules to help you prevent you from having uh, going into the complications of low blood sugars. 
So the 15 rows, we have the 15 gram, and then you wait 15 minutes. So the 15 gram is uh, you take uh, four tablets of, of glucose tab, or you take uh, four ounces of fruit juice, or anything equivalent to 15 grams of sugar. And then you wait, right? The wait 15 minutes, and after 15 minutes, uh, you check your blood sugar again and make sure that your sh blood sugar is more than 70. If it is more than, if it is still less than 70, you go through it again, you take another 15 gram and check. And if it improves more than 70, then you take your regular meal. Don't just say, oh, it's better. You still have to take your regular meal. Right. And the reason is a lot of the, a lot of the, uh, oral agents that are taken for low blood sugar, are you take them because your sugars are significantly low and they're quick acting. So they yeah. act immediately, but they also act for a short period of time. So they'll increase the sugar fast, but it may not remain maintained. So you have to have a meal to maintain that normal sugar after you achieve it with um, the rapid working you know, oral agents like the juice or um, glucose tablets or yeah. the like. So definitely um, after achieving that above 70 number, you have to have a meal to maintain your sugars. Yeah. And we've seen in severe cases whereby you are you are about to pass out or you can't even take the meal uh, or you can't even take the glucose tab. It's recommended you can take glucagon injections or glucagon pen, which are also out there. So you can always ask um, your doctor which one is best for you and just to make sure. And also to let your family members be aware that you have diabetes so they can watch out for you when you are not have, when you are having the symptoms and they can help you treat you during this period, this episode of low blood sugar. So how do we That's prevent right. this uh, hypoglycemia? Let's say we don't want, we our goal is to avoid it by homies. We don't want it to have recurrent low blood sugar because uh, this can cause uh, hypoglycemia on awareness, right? That's right. Right. Yeah. And uh, patients that are at highest risk for hypoglycemia on awareness are type 1 diabetics. So what does that actually mean? What is hypoglycemia on awareness? Mm -hmm. It actually means that your sugar can be low, very low, less than 70 or less than 55, and you not even feel it. So you may not even have those symptoms. So it could be 40. Um, that's dangerous. Patient, you know, 30. Yeah. But then when it gets to a very low number, you just pass out. So you don't have any warning signs leading up to the low blood sugar. And when it gets very low, it's dangerous because there is a number that it will get to where your body cannot maintain function. So, uh, so, but you miss the period of having the warning signs that you are actually getting to that level. So hypoglycemia unawareness can be very dangerous. And that's something that that's why one of the reasons we need to check our sugars often, uh, especially if you're on insulin, you should be checking your sugars, uh, uh, at least daily. If you're on multiple doses of insulin, then several times a day. Yeah. So it's very important to actually know what your sugars are and also, you know, be aware of whether you're at risk of hypoglycemia or not. And the other thing I wanted to add as well mm -hmm. is that there are certain pills. I just want, I don't want to necessarily name all the pills that are at risk of hypoglycemia, but one of the categories of pills that we are most concerned about that can cause hypoglycemia are medications called sulfonylureas. So medications like glipizide, gliburide, if a patient is on that, they can it can be long acting, especially an elderly patient. Um, an elderly person on a medication like that is at higher risk of having very low blood sugars. And if you come into an endocrinologist's office, if you come into our office and you're on insulin and uh, other pills and 
sulfonylureas, the first thing we'll do is stop the sulfonylureas if, if you develop hypoglycemia, because that is a likely culprit of causing it. So that's one thing we should be aware of. Yeah, that's a very good point. So you have said it all, but to just to hand up for today, we would like to let you know, don't forget this following point. You can avoid low blood sugar. Even if you are type one, you type two, you've been diabetic for many years or for many times, mm -hmm. or you are newly diagnosed, you can always avoid it. Know your body signs and symptoms, recognize it on time and prevent and check your blood sugar very often, especially if you're on insulin and give yourself your eat. If you are not eating, do not give yourself the short acting insulin, the one before your meal and don't skip meals. If you are fasting, let your doctor be aware, let them know that this is what you are going to do, or this is your plan so they can adjust your medication accordingly. We will continue next week. See you next week. Thank you for joining us.